Hakim Ziyech, Timo Werner and Kai Havertz. While most European clubs struggle in 2020 due to the corona crisis, Chelsea is planning big for the future. Much has been said and written about Frank Lampard's role in that transfer revolution. But only little is known about the role of the woman who is negotiating and closing those deals. Marina Granovskaya. She is widely recognized as one of the most successful executives in football. Her role in transfer negotiations has made Chelsea's player acquisition strategy one of the best in football. But in spite of her success and the scope of her authority, she's never given a media interview, preferring to opt for privacy over publicity. Her only media statements are made on Chelsea's website. These are painfully brief, leading many fans to speculate on the true nature of her contributions and value to the club. To provide some clarity on the matter, this video will be looking at how Granovskaya's approach not only kept Chelsea competitive amidst personnel layoffs in the 2010s, like the sacking of Michael Emanalo and Jose Mourinho, but also assured them the financial flexibility to enter the 2020s with enough money to set the course for the future. In 2003, Russian businessman Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea for 140 million pounds. Since then, Chelsea has won more trophies than any other Premier League club. Part of the reason for their success has been the exceptional work of their executive personnel, many of whom have long-standing connections to Abramovich's business circle, like Marina Granovskaya. Born in Russia and a graduate of Moscow State University, she began her career as Abramovich's personal assistant at Sibneft. After Abramovich sold the oil company, he enlisted Granovskaya to continue working for him in London, where her job was to manage assets at his British investment firm. There were no initial plans for her to work at Chelsea, but she soon started booking tickets and organizing matchboxes for special ticket holders. As she made more contacts in and around the club, her influence only grew. According to Chelsea Insiders, 2009 marked a turning point in Granovskaya's role at the organization. Didier Drogba's future with Chelsea seemed in doubt after he'd earned a European ban for clashing with a referee during the Champions League semi-final loss to Barcelona. Top executives at Stamford Bridge wanted him gone, including the then-manager Luis Felipe Scolari. But Granovskaya persisted that Drogba should be given a new contract and put her reputation on the line by assuring that she'd take responsibility for any future bad behavior. So Drogba signed a new three-year deal. In a redeeming turn of events, he went on to help Chelsea win the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League trophies. From then on, Granovskaya took the lead on football decisions. A year later, she was promoted to Abramovich's personal representative at Chelsea. She would join the board in 2013 and now pulls the strings as the person entrusted with managing the club's day-to-day -day football operations. Her biggest achievement in this role has been the transformation of Chelsea's acquisition process. Before her arrival, Chelsea had the reputation of buying big players for a lot of money, but getting low amounts when selling sometimes even below the market value. Their rivals viewed the club as something of an easy target for transfer deals. But as the one currently in charge of negotiating contracts for both first team and academy players, Granovskaya has dispelled that image. Since she took over, the average revenue from player sales per year has quadrupled. She's been able to maximize the club's income on player sales and helped generate more than 800 million pounds in profit from player sales. Chelsea is now leading the Premier League in terms of transfer income. This income has helped the club remain in contention for trophies in the age of financial fair play and has earned her a reputation as one of the most capable transfer dealmakers. Some of her achievements? Selling Eden Hazard to Real Madrid for more than 100 million pounds with one year left on his contract. Or selling Oscar for 54 million pounds to Shanghai for an Asian transfer record. But even more impressive than these deals is the sale of Diego Costa to Atletico Madrid. First, Chelsea bought Costa from Atletico when he was at the best age for 34 million pounds. After four years, the relationship with Chelsea's manager Conte broke down. And this was a very public thing. Conte said about Diego Costa in a press conference. I'm not interested to continue this, uh, this issue. And uh, I repeat, for me, 
uh, is the past. So everybody knew, including potential buyers, Costa would never play for Chelsea again. What made the negotiating position for Chelsea and Granovskaya even worse, Diego Costa publicly said things like, you can transfer me, but I will only sign with Atletico Madrid. So there is a player who will never play for Chelsea again, and there is just one potential buyer. But against all odds, Granovskaya managed to sell Costa for 59 million pounds back to Atletico, making a profit of 26 million pounds. There is no doubt that Granovskaya is in charge of these big deals. When Peter Cech, now sports director of Chelsea, was asked if he or Frank Lampard is responsible for the big deals with Harvards, Werner, Chiswell or Ziyech this year, he answered... At our club there is only one, one person who makes things uh, getting over the line or done or not, and which is Marina. Obviously she is responsible for almost every deal. Chelsea's lawyers have reportedly said that Granovskaya was responsible for 120 contracts during the summer of 2017. She conducted over 500 negotiations. She's also seen as the one who put in place the partnership with the Dutch club Vitesse Arnhem, who acts as a breeding ground for much of Chelsea's young talent. Additionally, the club's academy is now held in high esteem, meaning they can charge a premium for players that are unlikely to join the first team. The 2019 season alone has seen them recoup more than 20 million pounds for Chelsea to compete for player acquisitions. But despite being a prolific dealmaker, she is also renowned for walking away from deals when the asking price is too high. An example is when Juventus demanded upwards of 80 million pounds for Alex Sandro. One agent even told Telegraph Sport that with Marina, no means no, which is actually quite rare in football. No can often mean let's have 20 more meetings and eventually settle on a price. But when she says no, you don't hear from her again. Among her colleagues and competition, the consensus is that Granovskaya brings an air of integrity to her job. An executive at a rival club reportedly even said, I've been involved in three or four deals with Marina and she's always been good to her word. Every time I dealt with her, it was very straightforward, very professional and she never went back on her word. I can't say that about everybody else in this business. Although one agent did go so far as to describe Granovskaya's approach as cutthroat, the overriding impression of her is that of a firm dealmaker that's widely respected within the business. But for all her success within the transfer and development sectors, Granovskaya's breakthrough into global fame arguably came in 2016. They've signed a 15-year uniform deal with Nike. It is worth $73 million a season. Add it all up. And that is a billion dollars going to the Chelsea Football Club if they wear the Nike swoosh. The club was earning 30 million pounds a year from their sponsorship deal with Adidas. So it came as a shock that despite failing to qualify for the Champions League, Chelsea signed a deal with Nike that would pay them twice the amount. Granovskaya's bold move to part ways with Adidas six years prematurely even cost the club 40 million pounds in compensation but it landed them the second most lucrative equipment deal in Europe at the time, behind only Manchester United's deal with Adidas. The deal runs until 2032 and is worth nearly a billion pounds, providing the club with money to compete at the top end of the transfer market for years to come. This became their biggest ever commercial deal at the time. And this was only one in the long line of big commercial deals struck by Granovskaya, such as the Yokohama partnership and the deal with Carabao. But none of this is to say that Granovskaya's tenure at Chelsea has been without its failures. One of her most notable slip-ups was in making Kepa Arisa Balaga the most expensive goalkeeper of all time in 2018. According to reports, her first choice had been Alison Becker, who would have replaced the existing goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois. But it seems Granovskaya was also trying to convince Courtois to stay. And Liverpool capitalized on Chelsea's indecision to snatch Alisson for 66.8 million pounds, setting a new goalkeeper transfer record. But that record wouldn't even last a month. Dissatisfied with Chelsea's handling of affairs, Courtois went on strike. And with Kepa being the runner-up on the recruitment list, Granovskaya was left no option but to pay the 71.6 million pounds buyout clause in his contract with Athletic Bilbao. 
setting yet another transfer record for a goalkeeper many have deemed overrated for his cost for the club. But such mistakes aside, Ranovskaya's presence has been one of the few constants in a decade of evolution for Chelsea, with a prominence set to eclipse even that of the special one, Jose Mourinho. It's been a meteoric rise for someone who was once Abramovich's personal assistant, making it quite a close and personal relationship between owner and executive. But the relationship is also one of the most successful in European football. And even if West Ham United's vice chairman Karen Brady is widely referred to as the first woman of football, it seems Marina Granovskaya is set to continue as the most powerful. Make sure to check out our Patreon, where you can join our community and get access to exclusive downloads. Or even get a shout out in one of our videos like our MVP Snuggle Boo Boo THD.